Hello everyone, and today we're going to talk about conservation of energy. Now, quick recall before we jump into all of this. Uh, if we've So far in our energy work and power unit, we've really just identified what energy is, which is that ability to do work. And then we've talked about some of those other categories or forms of energy, which could be, you know, thermal energy and all those types of things. Okay. Uh, and we talked about the two broad types of energy are kinetic and potential. Those are the two overall types of energy, kinetic and potential. And that's what we're going to focus on a little bit more here with our conservation of energy uh, and looking at how those two work together to form our total energy, which is sometimes called our mechanical energy. So what is the conservation of energy? Conservation of energy, uh, so objects are constantly in this state of flux between potential and kinetic energy. As an object falls from, say, a high point, it gains speed or velocity, right? It's gaining that, which then increases its kinetic energy. Because if you remember, our kinetic energy is based off the movement of objects. If an object has motion, it has some form of kinetic energy. But since it's falling and, over, and likely reducing its overall height, and it's falling, we now are decreasing the potential energy. So as one is increasing, the other is decreasing. The kinetic energy and potential energy can never become larger than the total kinetic energy. And that total, so that's to be sometimes you'll see this total energy referred to as the mechanical uh, energy or the ME. Okay, mechanical energy is talking about in that total system, how much energy are there? We can just use total energy, but if you come across mechanical energy, that's what's happening there. So the equation that represents this. Now, this equation, much like our other conservation of momentum equation in an earlier unit, it looks really, really overwhelming at first. But if we break it down, so if we have our equation here, essentially what we see is all of these pieces, right? There's like a section one in between here, a section two in between here, and then there's kind of another section here. And so we end up ultimately having one, two, three, four sections. And now all these really end up becoming is the various kinetic, uh, kinetic and potential energies. Okay, so that's what's going on here. So if you would rather think of it as essentially the potential energy plus the kinetic energy is equal to the potential and kinetic energy at the end, that's a much better way to think about it. It simplifies it because if you know the potential energy equation and you know the kinetic energy equation, you know all of the pieces because that's all it is. It's just adding, taking all of the parts from all of the different scenarios we might have. That's all that's happening here. And we're going to use a few scenarios where we practice this and hopefully it doesn't become overwhelming. And so just to give you another visual for with this altering of potential and kinetic energy, uh, in this example, so the first part here, so in that uh, starting area, uh, if I can get my right little focus mouse here, so right up here, we have high potential energy, low kinetic energy. And that's because right now we're at a really high point. If we can almost think of this as like a graph, and this is good, our x-axis is here, we're really, really high, or I'm sorry, our y-axis, and then across our x. We're at a really high point. Now, we're not moving very quick right now. If you think of a roller coaster, when you first start moving, you're not moving very quick as you descend that hill, but you're very high up. But as you get all the way down to the bottom, you definitely increase in your overall velocity, which is why we have our maximum kinetic energy given this example. Of course, we don't have that exact number, but we just have that estimate. Now, the minimum potential energy is here because we're at our lowest point. If we look between our three scenarios, we're at that lowest point possible for that. And then our low potential energy, high kinetic energy. So this is a kind of that in-between where we still have pretty high amount of kinetic energy because we haven't gone up that much. We haven't consumed a lot of that energy. And we're going to still have a lot of that kinetic, but we're not going to have a ton of potential. Even though we went up by a little bit, we had the potential to fall back down. We don't have too much overall added to that. So let's look at a few practice problems. Now this is maybe a scenario that you might be given. So our first practice problem, um, find the potential energy in the kinetic energy for each slope of the ball as it rolls down the slope. And so we have uh, this ball right up here and it's rolling down this slope uh, and we wanna figure out, okay, what is the potential energy at the start? What's our kinetic energy in the second part? 
third part, what's her potential, and then at the very end, we've been given both parts. And that's important in this scenario, because we haven't been given a whole lot of information. Right now, our focus is looking at how do potential and kinetic energy interact with each other. All right, that's our focus, that's our main concept in this problem, is looking at how do potential and kinetic energy act with each other. So if we are looking at that, we know, well rather our first step, is we need to find what our total energy is. And we do kind of know that. And we know that because of the important piece that we are given right here. We're given both parts. And our total energy is going to be equal to our potential energy plus our kinetic energy. Right, and I said that we can sometimes abbreviate that ME, mechanical energy. If you want our total energy, that's fine, or total, it's fine. Well, in this case, we're going to have 500, or rather, well, we'll do zero joules to keep it in the same order. So zero joules plus 500 joules. So we have that. I don't know why I keep doing it. Okay. Um, so ultimately, our total is going to be 500. So with 500 joules in mind, that means each one of these points has to add up to 500. All right, so go ahead and take the time to figure out what each of these spaces have to represent with that information. And you should have found that our potential energy in our first blank is going to be 500 joules, and our second blank, it's going to be our kinetic energy is 100 joules, and in our third and final blank, our potential energy should be 200 joules. And of course, all those things have in common is going to be the total energy equaling 500 joules. So now with that information in mind, we're going to move on to our practice problem number two. Now this one, we get a little less information given. So now in order to do this one, we need to one, know how potential energy and kinetic energy interact, but we also have to know how to use those equations. And so there's an added level of understanding here. So in the below image, a box is dropped from the top of a building. We need to find the kinetic energy and the potential energy for each moment in time as it falls. The box has a mass of 50 grams and is falling from 25 meters. So in this scenario, we haven't been given a single location that has all of the parts. We've been given one or two, but we have not been given all of them, and that makes it more difficult. And, but what we have been given is the mass and the height from which it is falling from. So that's really important. Right, that we've been given these things, that we have the mass and that we have the height. Because now we have the information we need to find uh, some of the important pieces. So with that information in mind, um, we need to find the total energy in the system. Right, That's our first step that I've given you. So to find the total energy, we effectively need to find the total kinetic and the total potential for one of these scenarios. Now, I'm gonna let you do this problem, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a guide before you start. You've been given all of your pieces for the potential energy in the first blank. So that's where I would start. Think about if this is where we're starting, if we have this box and we're dropping it, what does that mean about our kinetic energy at the very beginning? All right, so with that information, go ahead and find the total energy in this system. All right, so we should have found it, and now what you should have gone through is a process similar to this, in which you'd find your kinetic energy. And so our kinetic energy is one half or mass times velocity squared. You put in your value saying, well, we have a mass of 50 kilograms. We have no velocity, it's zero, because we're, we're, you know, we're holding the box and then we're dropping it which is going to ultimately mean we have zero kinetic energy at the very beginning. Then at B, we have a potential energy mass times gravity times height. Now, if you remember, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Our mass was 50 kilograms, and our overall height was 25 meters, which gave us a rather large energy of 12,250 joules. Now, that was almost our final step. Of course, we have to now go through and find our total energy, and our total energy is going to be are 12,250 joules, and in this case we're minusing zero joules. We could also add whatever the whole piece was to find our total, but it, it does nothing, right? So we have, we have nothing going on here um, with our total amount of energy 
uh, as far as the kinetic energy having an impact. So that means we have 12,250 joules as our total energy. It's all potential at this point. It has the potential to use that energy. Now, we now have all the pieces we really need to solve it much like the previous example. We have all the parts that we may need, so now your job is to go through and find the rest of the information. You will see that I've also added the above information for you up here that we just solved. So we just did this part from question number one. We just did that. So now your job is to find the second kinetic energy, the third potential, the next kinetic, and then all of the final pieces. All right, so go ahead and do that. And you should have found answers like you now see on the left-hand side of the screen. Now, of course, yours may be slightly off if you did a, you know, a slight little rounding difference, things like that. But, of course, if you're within a few numbers, you are fine. Uh, and we should see, too, each one of these boxes. You can kind of check your work as you go. Uh, because let's say we take our, our middle scenario here. Uh, these add up to our total energy. You'll notice that that total is always staying the same. So if you have an answer in a blank that doesn't add up to the total... Something went wrong for how you went through that process. So it's a good way to self-check your work. All right, Ooh, let me clear off those lines there. There we go. So here's some other added information. In most examples and problems, we assume there's no friction. So if you've been going through this video thinking, well, hold on. I don't know if that's true. Some of that energy might be lost. And that's, that's correct. This is not how the real world works. However, Friction is a force that prevents motion. Therefore, it causes us to lose energy in the system. So, that does have an impact on our final result. So, how much of an impact? And we'll look at that in a second. If you do recall, when we did our conservation of momentum, most of the time, we could just kind of ignore it. Because we were able to get really strong predictions. And that's true in this scenario as well. But we're able to figure out a little bit of how much energy is taking from our overall system. Or our, rather, how much energy friction, I'm sorry, is taking from the system. So if we're looking at that, I'm riding a new amusement park ride. I want to know how much energy has been lost due to friction and air resistance halfway through the ride. I am 30 meters high and am moving at a velocity of 15 meters per second. The mass of the car carrying me is 200 kilograms. The total energy in the system at the start was 110,000 joules. How much energy have I lost? So here's ultimately what we need to be looking at. We need to figure out what my energy is at the moment, kind of, and look at the difference between that and my starting uh my energy right so that difference theoretically uh, is something that was lost due to friction or primarily friction right there's things reducing the overall energy in the system because as you know too if you look at roller coasters the highest point is always the first one the rest of them can't be any higher unless more energy is added to the system so there might be some roller coasters that have an extra chain that pulls you up again and that's because they need to now add more energy to the system, kind of reset it. If they didn't do that, eventually you would, you know, not be able to go over anything. You would just stop because you have to use all the energy from the beginning. So what do our steps look like? The first thing is we need to figure out our current total energy. And we use the information from above. And so in this scenario, I had said that I have uh, the car carrying me is 200 kilograms. And we're assuming that this is um, the car and myself so this is the whole that whole piece so me in the car is 200 kilograms uh, i'm 30 meters high i'm moving 15 meters per second and my original total was 110 so that'll be important later right now we need these other values and so we can see that i figured out my kinetic energy at this moment i have my mass i have my velocity and i find that my kinetic energy is 22,500 joules and then I have my potential energy, and I have 200 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, and my 30 meters, our standard potential energy equation, and find that my potential energy is 58,800 joules. So, with that, I need to find my total energy. And I add up those things, and that's what I have here. So that's what I find to be my current total energy. So what does that mean? So here's what I want you to do. With that information in mind, figure out how much energy, energy have I lost due to friction. In other words, how much is friction reducing my overall motion forward? 
you should find that essentially we're looking at the difference between the two. And so my original energy was 110,000. My energy lost due to friction would be then 110,000 minus my current energy. So in theory, I've lost 28,700 joules due to friction, some form of resistance, because if there were zero resistance, we would expect there to be zero energy lost. And in this case, that resistance to motion can be broadly thought of as friction. And that does end this lesson on conservation of energy. If you have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching.